Hey guys, a lot of you liked the video that I made a few months ago where I was watching random black pill shorts. That's what I'm going to be doing today again. What do you find more attractive? Mm, this guy right here. On the, the, right. the one on the right? Yeah. Okay. Who would you trust? Obviously, the one on the right is Richard Ramirez, in case you don't know. A pretty well-known serial killer. And the one on the left, I don't know, maybe nobody. Go ahead on the right. So you trust the guy on the right? Yeah. Who do you trust? There's nothing strange about what she's saying, seeing as, of course, naturally, you would trust a better looking, better developed uh, guy. Yeah. More, of course, he's trying to make it seem as if, oh, she trusts somebody who's actually a serial killer, but of course she doesn't know that. Trust more. I would say I probably trust the right guy a little bit more. This one over here, who would you trust? This one over here. Be more comfortable talking to. Honestly, I'd go with the f guy with the full set of hair. Okay, what about you? <laughs> uh, probably him. He looks a little more approachable. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, who do you think you would trust? I think <laughs> your hair even makes you look more approachable. It's true. It's just still funny to hear it. I I feel like the guy on the left, mm -hmm. looking at his eyes, mm -hmm. I feel like he's lived life. Like I could trust him. Out of these two, who do you find more attractive? Uh, definitely the guy on the right, though. Who would you be more comfortable talking to? Just based off the image, probably this guy, yeah. Who do you find more attractive? This guy. Okay, the guy on the right. Who do you find more attractive? That one. The one on the right? The one with more hair. The one with more hair. Who do you trust? Of course, again. But none of this is surprising anyway. Trust. Like, is not he a killer? Yeah, it's a good thing you know. I know my serial killer. I like his curly hair. I'm gonna have to go with him. Okay. What's your body count? <clears throat> my fake one or my real one? My fake I honestly one. don't think I can tell. My the fake one that I tell people? Yeah. Thirty-nine. It's only people that I cared about <laughs> that's on that list. I'm literally like I think I'm sleeping with like over twenty people this week. <laughs> yeah, well I don't count. Wow. Uh... I don't know what the point of this video really is, besides the obvious. Maybe it's also just to show that if you would have men who would look like them, be their weight and everything, then they would be saying zero. It for sure shows you that no matter how you look like as a woman, the door is always open, so to speak. Work. Oh, true. Because I, I, I mean... I only count like two people I've worked with, and that's because I low-key caught feelings on accident. I'm 22 years old. I'm six foot two, and I'm in shape. But I... Six two, that's good. Uh, in shape doesn't really matter, at least not very much. I've run into this problem where I can't really get women who are not overweight to even look my way. It's because you're SMV. <laughs> it's because your SMV is too low, or whatever he's gonna say. Well, actually, the last clip kind of shows you the problem. Women have access to a lot of men, so to speak. They have it pretty easy in comparison. Of course, because of the way you look like, uh, you're not going to have uh, <laughs> the same kind of access. Obviously, that's how it is today. We just live in very strange unnatural times in a super strange society where it's just built like that this system of course uh, it's a whole different story in nature point being you of course don't have access to these women because they probably have access to way better looking guys than you and there's plenty of them out there even guys who are just average looking and of course, they will still choose them just because they have this abundance of options. SMV is not high enough, dude. Where do you live? Nebraska. His SMV, sexual market value, is not high enough. Yes, literally, we can see that. Nebraska? That's part of your problem. You're not going to get a lot of hot-looking chicks living in Nebraska. Shit. What does that even mean? Uh, they are everywhere. Doesn't matter really where you live. You practice game on women that you aren't really attractive to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Get to the point of competing is what I'm getting at. 
man, you don't need to practice game. Why doesn't this guy tell him the truth? Because he's making money off of them or something. Somebody should tell this guy the truth. Yeah, he's 6'2". That's good. Maybe he could somewhat improve his looks, but really there's not that much that he can do. Yeah, it's just... The way you look like, man. You just have to realize what you can even get. It's not going to be much. You want hotter women. You're attracted to hotter women. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that. But for you to get them... Yes, it doesn't matter how attractive you are yourself. You will always be attracted to attractive people, obviously. Which is why nature, there's a very good solution for this problem. Whereas in our society, men don't know what to do. They see these attractive women or you know, women who see attractive guys. And then there's just nothing they can do about it. They... Watch people like uh, Richard Cooper or whatever this, yeah, this guy's name is and uh, all of these red pill people, dating coaches, people who teach you game and all of that. Nobody is telling him the truth that it's all about his looks. Those chicks, you need to be better. So compete, be better or keep your standards. How can he be better? What could he possibly do to get the women that he's attracted to? Just name something slow and just you know shoot the fish in the barrel if that's all you want to deal with what kind of car do you drive toyota camry fucking boring dude oh my god man yeah and if he would drive whatever i don't know anything about cars i don't care about them a ferrari or whatever whatever car it doesn't matter pick any car on the surf would it change anything he still has to get out of the car <laughs> you can't just sit behind some black tinted windows he will still come out and women will not necessarily be repulsed by him, at least he's tall, but uh, they will not look at him thinking, oh, wow, I want to be with this guy. And nothing can change that. No man-made objects on this earth. You got to be captivating with women, right? Like, you know, you can't just put... Yes, you got to captivate them with a car. Exactly. That's going to work. At the very, very best, the only thing that you could get out of that is a gold digger, somebody who wants to use you maybe for a few months, maybe even years. On the two can just rock back and forth and think, you know, I'm tall. I got this. Just. Yeah, he can for sure embrace his height. But still. Maybe he can do something with that. Lose the glasses and yeah, he could improve some stuff. Lean into the ones that you want, man. And if they're not responding to you, then that means you got some work to do. Yeah. And then uh, the unplugged alpha, <laughs> the unplugged alpha, what a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, the only thing this guy could do is really use his height to the fullest. It's still going to be pretty tricky. <laughs> yeah, six feet nine, that's a whole different story, of course. But the guy is probably also not bad looking. So that's another thing. It doesn't matter how tall you are. It can be impressive or at the very least women may look at you because you're dominating. But um, of course, if the face is really unattractive, then they're going to look and look away again. And the guy is looking kind of more jealous, I would say. Maybe intimidated. I would say more jealous, envious. Would you rather have a tall guy, no personality, short king, great personality? Tall guy, no personality. What? <laughs> tall guy, no personality. As if women care about your character. And the guy seems to be surprised. What? Why would you choose that? Why would you say that? They're just tall and they can be tall with me in these heels. Yeah, and in general, of course, as I said before, you're dominating if you come into a room or whatever, if you're outside. You're just displaying natural power, good genetics, and uh, also maybe a healthy body in the sense that you were maybe fed well as a child also. It's just strength. It's the most 
natural sign of strength you can have, whereas the guys of today believe that they will be strong when they go to a gym, height is always going to be more powerful and dominating than any muscles on earth. Look at Ilya Golem, he was not sure though, but any of those guys, it doesn't matter if a guy comes along who's much taller, he's always going to be dominating. Is it okay to ask a guy how tall he is? Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay to ask a woman how much she weighs? No. Why is <laughs> uh, Typical women today. <laughs> I love it. One okay and the other isn't. First, heightness and weight ha are completely different things. Uh, but um, but Yeah, it's different, but uh, you're just asking about somebody's appearance the state of their body let's say that you have a blind date or you're doing online dating more likely today and you don't see their full body you only see their face which is most likely going to be the case today then of course women are always going to ask about the height it's almost always the first question and then um, the guy would of course possibly want to know if she's overweight even though you can partly see that in the face but still it would be legitimate for a guy to at least want to know how much she weighs. If he's concerned, whatever the reason, it's different, but still you're just asking about the state of her body. It's really, at the end of the day, very similar. They both part of your physical appearance. Yeah. So why is it okay to ask about height but not weight? Because weight is like more sensitive to people. You don't think Weight is more sensitive to people. And uh, guys are not sensitive when it comes to height. Guys are not insecure about their height or what? I would say that guys are more insecure about their height than women are about their weight. At the very least, it's pretty much the same. I think some guys are insecure about their height. Okay, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> Wear heels, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, throw some shoes on. Why do you think people get more offended about weight because you could be heavier but just have more muscles well if you're if you're overweight it's like pretty rare for someone to be overweight from muscle right actually today with the gym culture it's pretty common yeah i'm overweight what do you want to say to me right now <laughs> oh, yeah. i'm just asking why do you why do you think people are offended by that <laughs> just not answering the question well i'm overweight so um yeah how about that I'm overweight. Okay, answer the question. Yeah, but I'm overweight, so. Hi, I'm Brittany. How are you? My name is Sean. Sorry, I'm gonna have to next do it. You're just not tall enough. <laughs> uh, this is from what, the early 2000s probably? Some MTV show or whatever? Uh, people aren't that blunt anymore. Kind of, sometimes, but maybe not as much. Not face to face, anyway. It's better the way it used to be, just straight up say it. Not that she is very good looking or anything. They're pretty much a match, more or less. Still waiting for that growth spurt, but. Good I... luck with that. Short, attractive guy, or tall, ugly guy? Which one are you picking? I'm gonna go tall. Why tall? Short kings are not it. It really depends on how short and how tall you mean. Even though it's pretty hard to be too tall. It's possible. It depends on how well developed you are. You could have a too narrow of a face, uh, the whole body really, if you don't get good food when you're growing. That's oftentimes the case today. And it also depends if you mean one meter 50 or 60, which is something like five feet four or whatever, or one meter 70, 70 something. It really just depends on what you define as short. But he's attractive. You're gonna fuck a tall, ugly guy? You gotta walk in public with this tall, ugly man. What if I walk in public with a short guy? That's yeah, it really depends. It doesn't matter how good looking you are, if you're actually very much below the average height, in the end it's probably going to be trickier. It's, it's both bad. If you're tall, then you have this 
dominant man next to you, but then you look at him and if he's actually ugly, then it's also bad. But if a guy is very short and walking with you, then he doesn't really seem like your boyfriend. You would think that he's somebody you're taking care of for your little brother. So it's both pretty bad. Yeah, just in different ways. Even more embarrassing. But what if he's like Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise, no. Tom Cruise is like 5'8". Probably the most Tom Cruise is 5'7", or maybe 5'8", I think. He's not that short. In a lot of countries, I think in most countries on Earth, he's pretty much average. Maybe not in Europe, in most places for sure, yeah. there He would be below average, yeah. Most attractive guy in America. I honestly don't know what Tom Cruise looks like. The culture out here. Would you guys date a shorter guy? No. No? No. I don't date men. No. <laughs> you don't date... <laughs> okay. Wait, why no? Why? It's just it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Right, what about you? Would you ever date a shorter guy? No, because I play basketball. Would you ever date a shorter guy? Yeah, but why would you? If he's slightly shorter than you and he's very good looking, probably. I've seen that before. But why would you ask this kind of a stupid question? In general, if a girl thinks of her boyfriend or some ex and thinks of a shorter version of him, then of course... She isn't going to find it attractive in her imagination. This kind of a question is never going to be answered with yes, I would. Hi. No. Why's that? I just, I don't know, you look at like same height couples and it's just, I don't know, when I look for a guy, I want the height. Same height couples are not that uncommon though. You see that a lot. No, the dominance, I don't know, it's just... Notice how socially acceptable to laugh at short men, how oh, it's social acceptable. Yeah, it is. Um, you can pretty much make fun of any parts of a man's body, say anything about a man. You can also make fun of a man who's fat. You see that all the time, everywhere in the media. You can really say anything you want about men. This isn't about men being short at all. It's that... In these countries, uh, the US, Canada, Australia, in Europe, it's matriarchy. So in matriarchy, it's fine to, of course, laugh at men, make fun of men, humiliate men even in a lot of cases. And that's because there's just this very strong hate a lot of times against men. Whereas if you talk about a woman's height, any body parts, her weight, of course, especially, then uh, it's just a taboo. You can't say it. You pretty much can't say anything about women, and you can say all of that about men. How short is too short? I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'5 five five for a girl, so I would say he has to be like 5'7 and above. 5'5 five five is tall for a girl? Where? Of, like, all my, boys have, my boyfriends have been above 6'3. Anything above 5 foot? Eight, I'd say. And again, as you can see, it's totally fine to talk about a man's height, but you can't ask men. You don't do those kind of interviews where you ask them what weight would be fine for a girl or anything about women. But so bare minimum five eight. The people I've dated have been really like abnormally tall. <laughs> My last boyfriend was six foot four. You're a fool if you still think that women are satisfied with their men being just a little taller than them. It depends on your looks again. The whole time I was seeing him, I was kind of just using it as a psychology experiment. And I didn't really, I didn't really like the guy. I more just wanted to see if I could break his heart. Oh. <laughs> she must have been hurt herself to do that, to try to hurt somebody else like that. She also looks like she's self-destructive. That's pretty clear. And Yikes. <laughs> it was fun. So did you break? It was fun to break somebody's heart. But that says everything. <laughs> break his heart then. Just a wee bit. I hope I did a little damage. Wow. Okay. Why do you hope that you did a little damage? Just, I like humbling men. 
you like humbling men. Yeah, this is what I mean. Uh, yeah, our society is super messed up. And yeah, it's like my pastime. Your pastime is humbling men. You do work at a strip club, so do you humble men? Oh, okay, yeah, that explains a lot. In there? No, I take their money. All right, those clips got pretty dark there in the end. It's almost scary the way some women are towards men. I wouldn't necessarily say that there's a lot of hate, although for sure there are movements like that, but it's more so this very strong disrespect that you see towards men in our society. It's very different compared to how women see men in nature and really even how men see other men. But okay, it's not comparable. <laughs> the way we live today has nothing to do with the way we live naturally, which is, of course, the main reason why it is like this, besides the typical conditioning and brainwashing that's going on through the media. This is exactly why you can make fun of men, disrespect them, really say anything you want about their bodies, but then if you say exactly the same or very similar things about a woman's body, anything about women, then you get beat down. And even by other men, you can say anything you want about men and men just look away or laugh about it themselves. But then if you say the same about women, you get attacked by women and men also. And this is what you could clearly see in this video. Even though I already knew all of this, just seeing this again, how messed up it is at this point, was pretty, I wouldn't say eye-opening, because my eyes were already open, but it just really highlights the problems. Thanks for watching.